Some Dunkin' Donuts coffee sure tastes good right now. Okay, display looks normal on the camera. Just trying to make sure I don't do a complete ride and uh, miss the audio again, like an idiot, so. All right, how you doing, Duff here? Today I'm wearing something that you wouldn't normally see. I mean, normally you see all of my safety gear uh, when I'm doing open road riding, my safety vest. No, I'm not as fashionable as uh, Marty's new uh, high visibility gear. Um, yeah, I always try to wear this vest when I'm on open roads and and my normal pads. But what I am wearing today that's different is this, jeans. No, I do not wear jeans very much. And the reason I'm wearing jeans is because it's freaking chilly here, man. Um, when we got up this morning, it was like 55 degrees and I've been putting off riding. It's uh, mid afternoon at this point, waiting for it to warm up a little bit it's still just, I think it just hit 60 degrees. So it's, it's downright chilly by Florida standards. So if I wore cargo shorts, I'd be uh, pretty cold. So I got jeans on. I want to do a fast ride out to Ave Maria. I'm not going to go all the way into town. I'm just going to go to the uh, entrance and back, but I'm on the 16X. I haven't gone to Ave Maria on my new 16X since I got it. So we're going to do it quickly today. Geez, I might actually put this thing down. If I can remember how, doesn't it just slide down? I gotta figure out how to put my windshield back down. Hold on. There we go. I'm not sure how the audio will sound to you guys. It sounds uh, like I'm inside of a fishbowl to me, but it makes my face feel better. I also have the, uh, the sunscreen down, even though it hasn't been sunny all day long. Cruising 25 without even trying, and I'm getting those little baby tilt back sensations. Um, probably because I think last time I checked, the tilt back was set at 42 kilometers an hour. And uh, last time I tried, I, I was unable to uh, change that. It, it seemed like that was the max setting, so I guess maybe I need to revisit that. It's fine. I mean, 25 is fast enough. And uh, we will uh, continue onward. Okay, so before we get into the meats and bone, the meat and bones of uh, this ride, I want to uh, take a second to uh, post a little information about uh, my, my buddy Elvis. The guy that I bought the Ultron T11 for, he's over in Singapore. Those of you that are not uh, familiar with the PEV situation in Singapore, it's not very good. Elvis asked me if I could do something to let people know about a special that they're running right now. So I'm going to roll that right now. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, this is Duff here. I just wanted to take a quick moment to make you aware um, of a big sale that's going on at ComponentSingapore.net. Component Singapore is where Elvis, the guy that I bought my Ultron T11 from, uh, works. And I'm not sure how up to date you are with uh, the happenings in Singapore right now in the PEV scene, but they recently have passed extremely restrictive laws that basically make it illegal to ride a PEV pretty much anywhere in Singapore. And the end result of that has been uh, people are selling or not buying scooters because they can't ride them in Singapore. So as a result, he has to get rid of some inventory as uh, quickly as possible. And he asked me if I could give him some help in doing so. And he forwarded me this page. I will include it in, in the description below. The prices that you see on the, uh, on the clearance page, he told me that the prices that you would get when you contact him are actually 30% less than the posted prices here on the site. So for example, here's a nine by kick scooter max, $1,099, 30% knocking roughly $300 off that plus shipping, of course, but uh, it, they have some unique scooters that are kind of unique to the, the Singapore market. So if you're looking for a uh, inexpensive mobility device, 
it's a good chance to uh, take advantage of, uh, of unfortunately, uh, Elvis's bad fortune. Could turn out to be your good fortune. So, I'll, like I said, I will include the link in the description below. And if you are at all interested in a scooter to add to your collection, take a look. Give it a consider. Elvis is a good guy, and um, I'm happy to support him best I can. Thanks. The person behind me has been, like, just following me the entire time. He wanted to turn here, but I guess people behind him were getting pissed because he was going so slow. They're beeping at him, I guess, because he wanted to watch me ride. Not the first time that's happened. It probably won't be the last. All right. We are swinging out across traffic. Thanks to my wide field of vision convex mirror, I had a very good view of the traffic behind me. Oh, and welcome back. Welcome back from my, uh, my little two minute commercial. But seriously, help Elvis out. He's a good dude. I feel bad for him. If you're looking for a scooter, um, it's a great time to buy one. He has some really good deals. So I'm sure there's many of you out there laughing at me saying that uh, 60 degrees is chilly <laughs> and that I had to bundle up, but it's just the fact that fact of life when you live in Florida, you know, it's all relative. Your body literally changes. And uh, you know, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, and, and 60 degrees never felt cold to me for a long time after moving to Florida, but over time it does. Um, I mean, any any time that the Thermometer starts uh, creeping towards 70. A lot of Floridians are grabbing sweaters and sweatshirts. Uh, that's no exaggeration. And don't forget, I am a snowflake after all. So, I mean, it makes sense for me to be complaining about 60 degrees. I'm not feeling too bad right now. My hands are a little chilly, but having the windshield down and the helmet helps a bunch. Uh, having the legs covered. If I was in shorts, man, I'd be freezing my ass off. So uh, the jeans do a good job of uh, protecting my legs. Uh, these, these sneakers kind of have a little bit of a, a, a mesh design, so air kind of blows through the sneakers. So my toes are feeling a little bit, but I'll tough it out. Don't worry about me. So after a long hiatus, I've been, I've been rolling around in my, my head the idea of um, doing some more live streams here and there. I did it for a year straight and uh, kind of got, got to be old. But also one of the reasons that I stopped doing the live stream was the audience uh, was dwindling. Now, usually you want an audience to grow over time. Uh, my audience actually started to dwindle. And I did an in-depth analysis on this. Uh, not really, but uh, I, did, I did give a little bit of thought. And it seems like the, the reason that the audience dwindled is because I sort of uh, opened up the... Uh, podcast to be or the live stream to be about a whole bunch of different things you know not just EUCs uh, then it was EUCs and one wheels and then scooters uh, and then when I got the Tesla I was even you know bringing up the Tesla stuff and it, it seems like uh, that's really where the problem was because hardcore people that are into EUCs they want to listen and talk about EUCs they don't necessarily want to talk about other PEVs. Some do, but it seems like a lot do not. And even uh, an even fewer percentage wants to talk about Teslas. You know, unless you own a Tesla, talking about them probably isn't going to be of great interest to you. So, um, if I do do some more live streams, I think it will stay very focused uh, on the EUC category, and uh, nothing formal, uh, nothing on a regular basis. But I do think uh, I'd like to do one once in a while. And if that idea interests you, feel free to leave a comment uh, below. I'll probably also put a poll on my, uh, my channel, my YouTube channel, just to get some feedback about it. But uh, yeah, I miss it a little bit. Not a ton, but some. And uh, we'll see what happens. I saw in the last week, uh, Rama had posted that he had a fall on his uh, Kingsong 18 XL. And I, I believe he said he broke his clavicle, his collarbone, I think. And uh, that's, that's an injury. It's funny, uh, th those of you that know who uh, Casey Neistat is, he did a video recently where he talked about how, how he broke his collarbone uh, on a one wheel, actually. And that is really the one type of injury that, regardless of the type of gear you have on, 
I don't really know that you can prevent that from happening. Because typically when a clavicle break happens, it's because you come off the device and you land on your side uh, with great impact and the clavicle uh, breaks loose when that happens, if the impact is great enough. So I'm not really sure what you can do to prevent that other than try to not land in such a manner. You know, you see NFL quarterbacks breaking their collarbones all the time and they have uh, huge shoulder pads on and it, it just, it doesn't matter if, if the angles are right and the impact is strong. It's going to break. And it's unfortunate because uh, it's, it's not a that's not, not a fun injury to come back from. So, Ram, I hope you heal up soon, dude. And actually, I'm a little bit lucky because when I when I face planted going on my uh, my Backfire Ranger on the on Immokalee Road, I came off with this arm outstretched above my head and kind of landed not totally on my side but sort of. So uh, that that easily could have been a, uh, a clavicle break as well. So I feel fortunate that nothing broke. I am running wheel log today, just to monitor my speed. Wheel temperature, which I don't expect to get very high. I don't know if that's accurate or not. It says that it's still at 29 degrees Celsius. It gives you an idea how chilly it is, if, if that's actually true. Because I'm now five miles into the ride and uh, usually the wheel temperature will be approaching 40 degrees Celsius at this point. I was asked a couple times in my last video uh, about what's going on with my solar project. I, I signed a contract to have whole house solar put in uh, to our property back in the beginning of October. <coughs> when that project started, I was very optimistic about things happening very quickly because the day after I signed the papers, there was a guy from the company there already doing a site survey uh, to get an idea of measurements and all that kind of stuff. But oh man, these guys are really, really on top of things. But unfortunately, nothing has happened since then. The uh, job is still stuck in permitting. And uh, when it was after about three weeks or so, because they said that permitting could take two or three weeks. At the end of the third week, I started getting a little antsy and, and asked them, I said, well, what's, you know, still stuck in permitting? What's going on? And I got a reply back saying, yep, yep, still the county's dragging their feet, still stuck in permitting. So uh, after a couple more days happened and still no updates, I decided to be uh, uh, proactive. Well, waiting three weeks, I guess, isn't being proactive, but I went online to the, the uh, zoning uh, or the permitting department and looked up my, the permit for solar on my house. And what I found kind of pissed me off. Um, basically, uh, about a week after I signed the contract, the the uh, permit was in the office, but then there it was rejected because something was wrong. They, they were missing some information. And uh, then there was like another three week gap and there was another message in the uh, case that whatever was resubmitted had errors as well. So it took them three weeks to address the first error this person doing all right it took them three weeks to address the first error let me just get across this bridge where we have no shoulder there we go okay thank you uh, and then there's a second error so this the delay the entire time was because the contractor was not on top of what was happening with the permit so I sent a email to the contractor the, the uh, construction manager saying, hey, dude, you guys were saying that it's just the county being slow when actually it was because there's problems with the application, you know? And the construction manager wasn't the guy that was actually submitting these. There was someone in the office that was doing it. So he didn't know until I pointed it out to him. So now I'm watching it like a hawk. Uh, they resubmitted what needed to be done, but then the county came back with something else that needed to be changed. I let them know right away that, that something else had to be done, and now they have submitted modified plans that hopefully address whatever uh, red flags were out there still for the project and i'm hoping this week the permit will be granted and uh, we can get this shit going because uh, when we i originally signed the contract hell i thought we would be totally done by now and we haven't even started so that's the update uh, when something more happens i'll be sure to let you know I want to give a quick shout out to Mickey, Mickey Miklos up in New York City. 
Uh, I just saw that he had, uh, I believe it's his third child. He might have told me, but I didn't even realize that his wife was pregnant, but he just had a, a child uh, this week. So congrats, Mickey. Love your content, love what you do, and congrats on expanding the family. Well, the temperature sensor must be working now. We're up to 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, there's, there's some pushback, yep. Tilt back. Yeah, right around 25 is where I get it. And it's not, it's not the, it's not the, uh, the hold on to your shorts uh, tilt back that you get with King Song sometimes, but just a little subtle rock, which I don't need. I don't need that until I'm going, uh, you know, 28, 29. This helmet's nice. I thought, you know, one of the problems of having the windshield down would be you would get like no airflow, but I still do have airflow coming through the mouthpiece here, so it's good. I don't feel, uh, you know, like a, the air is stagnant under the helmet here. Great design. I really like this helmet. Link in the description below. You guys may notice I, I've added some EUC Army badging to my 16X. I ordered these small versions of uh, these stickers. I used to have a bigger version that I originally was uh, putting in with the 3D stands that I sold, but now I, I made some smaller ones. Have, they have more flexibility where they can go, so I'll probably stick them on my other wheels as well. There's lots of time I get people that ask me uh, where to find out information, and I can just point to the wheel, go to that website. The reasons I'm trying to get this uh, ride done quickly is because, of course, it's chilly out. But also, the Eagles play today at 4.30. So I need, to, I need to have this video done by then, uploaded, and so I can uh, relax and watch the Eagles. They're playing the Patriots, who are coming off their first loss of the season, so it's not going to be a fun time. We'll see. I don't have a lot of high expectations, but if the Eagles could steal a win, that would be awesome. Some Dunkin' Donuts coffee sure would taste good right now. Yeah, man, some coffee to warm up. Ooh, that would be good. Unfortunately, there are no Dunkin' Donuts uh, along this route. Maybe someday, who knows? Cop in the bike lane, what the heck, man? It's not cool. Oh, in case you're wondering where Cindy is, she's, she's home. She's, she has a bunch of uh, little projects she's working on. So yeah, she's not here. She, she would hate riding in these temperatures. I mean, she, she's a native Floridian, so her cold tolerance is zero. Uh, so she would be miserable trying to do this. So that's why I'm out here solo. All right, here we are, Ave Maria. Like I said, I'm just doing a UE right here in uh, reverse in direction. I do want to stop and just check, check my statistics and uh, send a text to Cindy just so she knows that I've made it halfway and try to see if I can get that sent before she calls me. All right, so I've gone 13.33 miles so far, top speed 26 miles an hour, and I'm, and I'm just about at 78 volts. Unfortunately, um, this version of wheel lock still does not read battery level accurately. So yeah, things are rolling around. Average riding pace there is 22.6 miles an hour. All right, so let's see if we can send a text to Cindy. Made it to Ave Maria on my way back now. We should be good to go. All right, so it's two, I, I think I left right about two. So it took me like 40 minutes to get here maybe. It's two, okay, it's 2.40 now. So let's see how long it takes me to get back. Uh, I'm only up to 32 degrees Celsius, it's crazy. Not sure, but that might be a Gawker in a Kia behind me. Uh, maybe not. Got a little bit of a headwind this way, uh, adding to the chill factor. I'm gonna need some hot, some hot coffee, hot cocoa, or something when I get back, because so I can just feel the uh, the uh, chill soaking into my body. Oh, one other thing I forgot I wanted to apologize for: uh, the video from last week in the 16X. I think I titled it something like "Am I Am I Kicking Myself for the Trade or the Decision?" Something like that. And, some people were confused, I guess, because they didn't outright say in the video, no, I, I am not kicking myself. So just to be very clear, I am very happy with my trade of the 16X for my uh, Nikola Plus. Uh, no regrets whatsoever, honest. That cop I passed got somebody. Hard to believe, it's not like he was hitting it all, wow. They must have been hauling ass.
gas. What's this angle look like? Is it good? I never shoot like this, but I know some people do. It's kind of awkward. I really hate to be a whiner, but I'm downright cold at this point. I am freaking freezing. Oof. Oof. This is a long ride to do in this kind of temperature. I'm now probably 16, 17 miles into the ride. Real temperature still is at 32 degrees Celsius. It's running like a refrigerator. Usually when I'm riding, you know, it's it's always a matter of uh, the ride feeling too short. I could always go longer. Uh, today, it is not that way. I am counting down the miles uh, to uh, get home. It's just this just isn't fun, man. My my muscles are all tight. Uh, Toes are cold. Whew, toes are really cold. We're about between six and seven miles from home at this point. This is the five, gal five miles to go mark. Hopefully it's a quick five miles. I missed it on camera, but we just passed uh, the first house that I've seen that had Christmas decorations out. They had candy canes hanging from a tree and uh, a uh, Christmas train in the front yard. We normally do our stuff uh, Black Friday weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, so won't be long. Okay, final turn onto a Mockley Road. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, two miles to go. Come on. 16X, get me home. Ooh. Can't go too fast. It's interesting, that beeping, I, I wasn't going that fast, but I was kind of leaning a little bit to accelerate, so I guess maybe I was over-leaning it a little bit. I don't know. We're still cruising, same speeds, 21, 22 miles an hour. But at this uh, lower battery percentage, it did not like that uh, pseudo-aggressive lean. I just noticed because of the wind, and I guess because the sweatshirt's kind of loose, the, the road transmitter was like up here uh, kind of on my shoulder so hopefully uh, you guys can hear me I'll find out shortly yay we're home oh man freaking frozen oh. stiff oh. stiff very stiff When you get old, you get stiff. All right, so after all that riding, something like 26 miles, the wheel's only at 34 degrees Celsius. It's the coolest I've ever had a wheel for that kind of ride. Not surprising though, it is cold. All right, um, let's just hop back to wheel log real quick. All right, so we left out there at 239, 240, let's say 240, now it's 316. So uh, 36 minutes to go uh, that, uh, 13.3 miles. Total distance for the ride, 26.35. Battery voltage is down to about 72 volts. Again, not quite sure what that translates to. I think I have the version of the Kingsheim app one here that actually reads the uh, battery life correctly. Okay, it says my battery's at 43% after 26, almost 26 and a half miles. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, if you found this ride interesting, entertaining, or if it's just fun watching me try to find the visor switch. There you go. Please give the video a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel, think about subscribing. If you're gonna subscribe, you might as well hit the notify bell, which is over here somewhere. Oh, this helmet's nice, but it's tight on my head. Oh, my nose is running. Feel free to leave your comments, comments suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. Take a look at the Component Singapore website for their specials. 
If you're looking for a personal mobile, mobility device, you score yourself a good deal there. And uh, that's all I have for you for now. Hope you had a good weekend. Go Eagles. And uh, till next time, Duffman out. Alexa, pause so you don't copyright my video. Why not? Hi, baby. No, you're not naked. I'm frozen though. I bet you're frozen. I got hot coffee. I can give you. Good. Say hello. Cindy's in here doing her Cindy oh, things. Don't show my room. Come on, go away. She's, she's reorganizing. It's in the middle of like construction. Okay. Yes. This is, this is a baby slash craft room. Baby craft this? room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good thing you didn't go on this ride. Oh my God! I'm so freaking cold. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's good and cold. Okay. Bye.